Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we are going to have a look at Aquamarine Linux. This is a distro I have not looked at in the past. However, it is in the flavor of a Fedora with some extra things done. You can think of like Gecko Linux instead of OpenSUSE or as some would say Linux Mint instead of Ubuntu. Basically it takes Fedora, which has become better and better and better, and it does what it considers improvements by adding RPM fusion and things like that. Now, why do I say it considers uh, improvements such as? Well, the reason is, is that Fedora itself is what it is because it relies on FOSS software only. And what that's going to mean is that you're not going to have anything inside of Fedora that is proprietary or otherwise non-free software. Whereas Aquamarine, if you are looking for a Fedora that you're not as concerned about that, you're more concerned with a working and functional system, this is exactly what you're going to get inside of Aquamarine. Why? Well, the first thing that they do is they pre-install NVIDIA drivers. So if you are running NVIDIA, this would be a good logical choice because you're going to have those drivers installed by default. They also enable the RPM Fusion repository out of the box, meaning that it's a lot easier and faster to install software that may not be in the raw repository for Fedora. And it is also going to have more multimedia codecs available and some already installed. So these are some of the major differences that you would be looking at. So what we're going to do is first we're going to have a look at their website. There's not a ton of information. It is a uh, Ultramarine is a Fedora based Linux distribution designed to stay out of your way and to be easy to use, such as every distribution claims. All additions come with several tweaks pre-applied to make the initial setup and daily usage seems uh, seamless. Now, they don't tell us what those are other than RPM Fusion and about a bunch of other things that you always do to Fedora when you need to use it and the uh, pure FOSS approach to it gets a little bit in your way. So for that reason, it is a very good distribution in that if you're not as concerned about the total allegiance to the FOSS software, but if you happen to be a person that uh, really wants to run Fedora, this is a good logical uh, use because it gives you everything that you need that you might have to do. I mean, we install Fedora. First thing we do is RPM Fusion, and then we install the drivers, and we install the codecs. Uh, this does that for you. So there you have it. If you happen to not care about the uh, complete dedication to the free, uh, exclusively free software, this is a, a good option. We have our scroll to learn more. Thank you. Um, I have been using the internet for a while. <laughs> All right. Um, so what is it? It is Linux-based operating system for your own personal workstation or battle station. Battle stations all. To Tortuga. We'll get in that in a minute. Based on Fedora, developer-friendly and sane defaults. Okay. Applies pragmatic tweaks and settings to make sure the out-of-the-box experience is as smooth as it can be. We've tried to make sure it, we will be able to get started as quickly as possible. Uh, I think that what they're doing is tipping to the hat to the, uh, the fact that when you used to have Fedora, there were like several articles all over the internet. You can still find them. Like 29 things to do after you install Fedora. And those are the 29 things you need to do to, you know, get any MP3s to work work and videos to play and um, software downloaded and installed. So Fedora used to be a lot harder. In fact, if you go back to the very first videos on this channel, please don't. They're cringeworthy. But if you do, if you are brave and you do that, then um, you'll find that there were indeed a lot of issues with Fedora early on. Not that it was a bad system. It's just it was completely dedicated to free and open source, which it still is. But back then, the pure dedication of free and open source was not as good as it is now. And so they have really given us that information. We have a few different reviews here from Tyler's Tech, Buzz Central, Linux Cast. I don't think any of those are looking at this new version. They have a DistroWatch article and... And you can actually use a migration script. And so I thought it might be fun to have a look at what that migration script looks like. So here is the script. And um, you're going to run this. And it's going to migrate from Fedora to Ultramarine Linux. It's going to create a log file here. 
and then it's going to get the uh, the distro release. So it's going to run a grep, grab your distro release version. And as long as you are running Fedora OS greater than 35, it's going to allow you to run. You can see here if it's migratable, we have a true variable. If it's not, we have a false variable. And um, then what we have to do is uh, it says here, uh, you're already running it. Congratulations. Or it says... Your OS version is not supported. Please run the script on a copy of Fedora, Linux 35 or newer. And then if it's false, of course, it exits. If it's not false, it's going to uh, check it as root. All right. Now that it does that, we get some information. Are you sure you want to continue? And then if no, <laughs> exiting. But if yes, it is updating the system. Dot, 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 dot. That's right. And so... It's going to run DNF update. It's going to download all of the software. It's going to install RPM Fusion. So nothing out of the ordinary there. And it's going to now install the repositories for Ultramarine. So here's the package list, Ultramarine repos, comment, Ultramarine repos. And then it's going to uh, add this repo for the current version. And then once it does that, it's going to swap the Fedora common release to the Ultramarine common release, and then it should run another update. Where's that at? Okay, uh, so you can kind of see what it's doing there. So that's what the, uh, the update script is going to do. So nothing out of the ordinary right there. So there is something to look forward to if you happen to want to run this. Now we do have a few different versions here. So if you hit your download, uh, we do have the flagship version is a budgie build, and we have a gnome edition or gnome edition, depending on what you like. We have a Pantheon edition, so if you if you love that uh, Pantheon desktop environment, but you are like elementary, um, hey, you have a good option. We can run uh, we can run this, and hey, that would work. And then we have a Plasma. There used to be, you might find references to a cute fish. I don't see that anymore here. And uh, so there you have it. Now there are some ARM builds and there's some older versions there as well. Let me look at the ARM builds there as well. So here's your ARM builds. So uh, I don't know, maybe we should try these out. Pi? Hmm? Hmm? Anyone want some pie? And uh, this version here is called Tortuga. To Tortuga! We must pick up our uh, our scallywag crew, apparently. So uh, code names are back. This is Tortuga. Great. Um, so shorter shutdowns, better tie and Keemer. Is it Keemer support? So, you know, extra language support. Uh, System76 scheduler. The GNOME edition is GNOME 44 uh, with, uh, you know, the new shell. So pretty cool stuff there. And it looks like our default theming there. We have a KDE edition over here. Nice new wallpapers. And there are some things here for the Raspberry Pi. And here is your uh, upgrade. So if you're going to be running an upgrade, you can go ahead and do that. There's information about uh, in downloading uh, downloading the package to convert your Fedora into it, which makes me wonder, is it just a Fedora with a few extra packages installed, or is there really something major different about it? That's something that uh, is certainly up for discussion as we go through the rest of the video. But with that, let's go ahead and have a look at our... Inst or our um, we've already installed it. It's the... It, installs just like Fedora. So <laughs> what a surprise there. Uh, so once we load this guy up down here, we got uh, our nice ultramarine uh, starting page here, and then we should have a login window. And we do have a login window. And uh, one of the videos, I think it was Tyler Tech videos, he was commenting on, on this. And uh, up here, it still said Fedora. Now it just says localhost.local domain. <laughs> And so something is clearly not configured. And over here is the budgie desktop. I don't see any other specific options there uh, for this. So this is running on um, this is running on X. So uh, let's go ahead and get logged in here. I don't see any other settings if I wanted to use Wayland. Of course, Fedora defaults to Wayland, but this drops Wayland, I guess, and goes back to X11. So uh, let's go ahead and verify that. 
and let's go ahead and start with our settings. Now, one of the things that they've done is they've taken out the GNOME uh, the, the basic GNOME settings, which used to be in Budgie, or maybe Budgie did it. I don't know what the changes have been in the newer versions of Budgie. Maybe we should have looked at that, but we didn't. Now it is called the Budgie Control Center, which is the same thing as your uh, as your GNOME uh, settings panel. So all of those options are going to be there. So you can see down here, our device name is localhost. Here's our hardware model. We're running this on VirtualBox. We have six gigs of RAM. There's our, our graphics and our processor. And our budgie version is 10.7.2. OS name is Ultramarine Linux, OS type 64. Our windowing system is X11. I did not see a Wayland option in there. And our kernel is 635. Let's see what software updates does. Okay. Maybe hopefully I didn't just push something that's going to cause all sorts of fun stuff. Um, oh, yes, it did. Uh, let's just go ahead and let that search for its own updates in the background. You will notice that all of the uh, open icons here are going to be down here on the bottom of the screen. So you can see all the other options that we have. Here's our nice uh, nice pictures here. Uh, oh, did they give us a kitten? Of course we have to run a kitten. Jeez. Um, if it didn't just crash my system. The kitten just crashed my system. The, the, beast, is, the beast has struck. Stand by while we fix our system here. And we're back. And we have a kitten on the screen, folks. We have a kitten, and he's about to eat that flower. That poor flower. He is done for. All right, so let's have a look at what else we have over here. Uh, we were in the process of starting up software. I don't know if it was the kitten that killed it or the software repository that killed it. Let's go ahead and pull up the software repository. Hopefully that doesn't kill anything. Well, that's downloading the software. We can have a look at our Raven menu. So here's our basic defaults. It does. Uh, it's just your, your basic, uh, basic Raven menu, basic budgie. Uh, we do have a fairly large panel down here. That's fine by me. There are some updates to be installed. I want to have a brief look at the software repositories first. So again, remember that um, this is going to be running RPM Fusion out of the box, so we didn't have to do anything special with it. And uh, it should have some Fedoras. So here's the Fedora Flatpak repository, not the testing one. Flathub is also set up. So you're going to be able to see, uh, see any of the flat packs from Flathub or Fedora. And then we have our basic Fedora. Uh, you can see the updates is on, the testing is off. And here's RPM Fusion, RPM Fusion Free Tainted. There's some test updates which are disabled. Here's our non-free and our non-free tainted. Ew, it's all tainted. So that's all set up there. And then, uh, so basically we have everything that we would happen to need. Here's Linux vendor firmware as a service. So you can see that it is out of the box. It has a lot of software enabled here that you would not be able to find on the basic uh, repository. So let's go ahead and do a brief search for something. Let's look for VLC. Has always been the testing application that you use looking for Fedora. Uh, because it's not in the, at least it wasn't in the main repo. I am noticing it is a little slow to do searches and things like that in the software center. Not sure exactly what that is. My download speed here is about uh, two or three Mbps. So I doubt that that's the download speed because we're just talking about information for packages. So here's VLC right here. And you can see that the only option they're giving us here is Flathub apparently. So, see if there's anything else over here. I do not like what I'm seeing in some of the new uh, GNOME Software Center type stuff where it's giving us things like unsafe on uh, a, a software that for sure has been around for a long time. All right, so here's a flat pack version, and here's the R, um, RPM Fusion version as well. So you can grab it from a repository or from a flat pack. So we do have good options over there. And the next thing, let's go ahead and just have a look at the software installed by default. Budgie screenshot, calculator, connections, allows us to do uh, virtual desktop management. These are files, GNOME, maps. So it looks like we do have a lot of uh, software that is useful for a full system. Image viewer, photos, 
Uh, we have Firefox by default. We have the full suite of LibreOffice. Here is our sound here. Uh, we have our Budgie Control Center, and we have our Budgie Desktop settings. Remember that your Budgie Desktop settings are going to be your options where you're going to change around your panel, your Raven things, and such like that. So we do actually have a, a pretty nice overall look to it. The theme is, is fine. Uh, nothing is hugely out of the ordinary. So I think that there are a lot of, uh, a lot of comments that were made on the previous videos have been listened to by the team. They fixed a number of the, the minor issues that people had pointed out. Uh, let's also pull up a terminal, which is not bound to the hotkey. Uh, that is something that was mentioned before. Let's see if HTOP is installed. And it is. So we're running about 1.3 gig, although in all fairness, we were running some extra software. So we might want to reboot it and see what it looks like. Although that's not too out of the ordinary for something like Budgie. So uh, there we have it. It is a pretty nice system. It, uh, it's going to be a Fedora that's installed and completely ready to use. So we're not going to have to worry about getting all of the multimedia codecs and all that kind of stuff running that, that we might want to get running. So out of the box, you're going to have something that works out pretty well. Let me go ahead and do a search I want to test out, see if networking stuff is working. Of course, my NAS is not turned on right now, but uh, that's okay. Let's see if it at least finds anything else over there. Nothing else. It should search for networks and at least see the router. I, I, I think it probably would. Um, no, I don't have any windows on anything. That's just kind of the default from the, um, from the router there. So having a look at our disks. Here's our disk. Uh, so we're using ButterFS. We have our basic uh, simple partition scheme. Nothing out of the ordinary over there. And out of the box, you can kind of see there's not a lot of stuff being used. Let me have a brief look at the disk usage analyzer. Have a look there. Here's our home folder. 99% oh, of the data is in the cache. That's exciting. <laughs> Could not detect occupied disk spaces. All right. So um, there is our brief look over here at um, uh, our brief look over here at our ultramarine Linux. So with that, it is a pretty nice looking system. It is going to be Fedora. So it's going to be good and solid. Fedora has been getting better and better and better as the years have come by. So that's always good news when we start seeing that. And uh, with that, though, the this one here does take those extra steps out of the way. So this, I think, is a really good build to use if you are looking to do Fedora, but you want to use things like NVIDIA drivers or uh, RPM Fusion software. You're not as concerned about the exclusivity to free software. You're more concerned about getting a system that works and you want to use something like Fedora. So definitely check out Ultramarine if you are inter interested in a system like that. And with that, thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.